Hello and welcome to another Ron Gamer video. Wix here. She's back in version 2.0, although we could consider it a version 3.0 if you consider the removal of the Titan uh, resist skills and all of those uh, resist against uh, melee and range thing that we used to see on the earlier skills. But uh, so here's Wix here 2.0. And uh, she seems to be quite powerful as a Imperial buffing Titan. Uh, whether she will be the one that will redeem Imperials as we want them, want uh, some Titan to be, we shall see now in the skills to come. Um, and also we'll do a comparison with Krothos, who uh, was or is the Imperial Master. And we'll have a comparison to see which one comes out on the top. So here's Vix Vixia's new skills. Uh, as herself, she's a ranger, and in fact, the good the background theory for me uh, is that she was my very first Forza Titan. I think Ladega was the one I got soon after that, so that's many, many years ago. So, And I still have my Vixia at level 51, so that's kind of fun. Uh, so here's her with her skills. She's got some pretty good skills on her own. She has uh, a lot of damage uh, and a good amount of health, so you're getting more than X health and... and uh, Getting X damage there with 60% base damage. So for a new uh, player in the game, yep, she'll do quite a lot on her own, uh, taking out a lot of things. And that armor that you get is quite interesting. You're getting 150% armor for her, uh, which is quite unusual for rangers. Not going to be terribly useful if you have, um, you know, something uh, like Panther, something is charging up to you and... All that ice damage you're seeing there, a lot of it is going to be range damage, so you, she's not going to really do much on her own. But if you can keep her far, I mean, that armor will certainly, uh, you know, help take out some range damage uh, from grenadiers or archers that have less armor, armor piercing than that, so that would be helpful. But she is missing the all critical armor piercing, so uh, she's not going to do a lot on her own when it comes to attacking uh, very high armored units or titans. But a fun titan, fun skill set uh, there be. Uh, so right, regarding the Imperials, and uh, this is her core strength, although not the only core strength, is that she brings in Imperials with 360% nice damage, which is the most you have you we get with Imperials in the game, um, uh, matching what Protos brings. And uh, when we do a comparison, we shall see how the other stats stack up. Uh, and she also brings in the most health you can see on Imperials. Exceeding even what progenitor does with 297% uh, health and 40% base health. Now that is a unique combination. One of the things that all of us were, all of us still probably moan about is the fact that Imperials just don't have enough health pool to stand and do the damage that they are. Because Imperials are in inherently units that are meant to be the uh, melee gloss cannon version of um, of grenadiers, but though that doesn't really help in the era of uh, troops such as uh, horde, uh, which 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 can also serve as tanks, as we know from Rostam, and can deal a lot of damage. But uh, yeah, the Imperials, what they are primarily shining in, and uh, which is after we saw a change occur, they do have more health than they had before, and now they also have. And this has been there for a while, but they start off with the 80% base armor. So now here you're going to get 238% armor, which is the most we have seen so far, uh, unless I'm wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure that's right. The most armor we get on Imperials. So if you couple that 80%, you're looking at 318% armor off the bat. So that is impressive. What that means is it is possible to get barrels where you could exceed 450% armor and uh, uh, hit closer to that 500 mark which you see Rostam having on his Imperial. So it is possible though not straightforward. Um, so that Imperial is kind of excellent but it's right on the brink of what certain Titans can overcome. Um, but what I find being the biggest negative of Vixia and I find this not just being true for any uh, for Vixia but any Imperial Titan is I don't understand why the, the the devs are so shy on giving us more armor piercing, because 88 armor piercing, although yes, that's an X skill for Imperials, it isn't up to the meta. If that was 176%, I think 
uh, these imperials would have seen would have been viewed in a much better light uh, but that low AP that we're going to see means that it's going to be very hard for you to actually create builds which can produce effective armor piercing to take down um, anything upwards of 250% which is quite easy these days to do with for example if you take your Vixia against another Vixia you're not going to be able to pierce that armor uh, pierce the armor of the other Vixia so that is definitely a, a negative point but what you do get is 45% critical which is good because Imperials do start with a very low critical um, uh, thing so 45% is good which means you can quite easily build up uh, builds where you know you have 100% critical uh, for your already pretty massively uh, damage dealing Imperial so that's good you do get 35% melee ranged and all elemental resist now that is excellent uh, so you're going to start with respectable amount for all and that 35% all elemental resist would mean that uh, equipping about two or three relics uh, which give all elemental resist so you can um, look at of course uh, a frost shield for a specific element can take that to 75% uh, all elemental resist against the element that you're attacking and uh, if you couple with just uh, one other relic which gives 20% all elemental resist uh, I mean the ring of juice would be absolutely great uh, and uh, yeah you, you you can hit max resist to all ele uh, to, to that one specific element but so that's definitely useful makes it uh, more viable as well on attack uh, so and as we shall see in a few of the skills can actually help with that so I think so far what I can comment on is that Imperials really good skill set but the armor piercing remains uh, low to match the current meta in my opinion at least uh, we're talking about the other thing that this Titan has which is very very unique and uh, which we have only seen actually on a god uh, Ares that is those Spartan troops which are special fire troops here we have special ice troops so we've got ice archers isn't that interesting uh, so these archers are archers which are your normal archers but they they do a bit more than normal archers they don't seem to have anything uh, uh, less than what normal archers do they do ice damage is the main difference and they have 40% extra damage compared to normal so that is that is a significant amount and you're looking at 10% extra range which is marginally more I don't know how noticeable that will be and they have 30% health now that is good obviously because if uh, that you're gonna have all this but do remember though that Vixia will can give you a maximum of 8 of these ice archers well we'll see why when you can get eight archers we can get at least three in the battle so they can offer you some uh, some there but these cannot be trained you can't train ice archers you only get them on the field now their stats are impressive you get 360% damage 88% armor piercing critical 150% armor and 180% health so they, they are quite meaty uh, that extra 30% health that adds up compared to normal archers would certainly uh, let them stand a few lightning storms and death and so on and so forth and that armor is useful um, but the armor piercing is low which again means that if you are uh, you know considering using these to take on high armor uh, armored troops then that could be a that could be an issue but one thing which I'll just talk about very soon though is these art ice archers three of them summoned right at the start of the battle but the remaining five are only triggered as we will now see from the special skill only triggered when one of your troop dies all right so if you can manage to have your troops uh, sustained for a while on the battlefield uh, and wait till all the your, uh, your enemies summons have happened uh, then you can actually use your remaining five archers and hopefully they don't uh, they don't spawn on the enemy um, you can actually use them to do some damage um, so that would be interesting but of course the low AP would mean that their, their actual effective damage output will be much lower than what you would uh, probably want to have right now so Ice Archer, some of the stuff, you will get one Ice Archer for every time an enemy gets killed and you can get five of those. 
And the other skill which I do particularly like, which is very interesting, is that whenever you go one of your allied troop dies, and this can happen 15 times, each time that happens, you will freeze two enemies and shield two allied troops, and that can happen 15 times. Now, where this might be really useful for Wix here, um, probably on defense actually, I mean, even attack though, but on defense, if you let's say take your Zabava against Wix here, and you 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 know you do a few swipes and yeah you probably will kill, will kill these um, imperials which don't have enough armor piercing and once you kill them your uh your Zabawa will get frozen now if you equip certain relics that improve the freeze duration you can have Zabawa in basically incapacitated for a while and you're going to get shield as well so that that is going to be quite fun uh meaning that you will have to factor in that Whenever you go up against Vixia's Imperials on defense, that whenever you kill any of her troops, that you will be causing um, your Titan to freeze or your troops to freeze that are engaging in battle. So, and this will become increasingly more uh, interesting if you factor in the archers. Now, these archers, these five archers, or these every time it happens, if the archers don't spawn in the mix, if they are away from where Zabawa is, they can actually be be attacking us above from the back when the, when that happens. So this is a very interesting skill and I think if used correctly you can do a lot with this specific skill. But remember for all this to happen one of your troops has to die. So if if Zabawa is for example going up against your Vixie on defense and she does a few swipes and doesn't actually manage to kill an Imperial completely but manages to kill you know the, you know get each of them to like 10% health then this is not going to get triggered um, so yeah it's going to be it's going to be fun to see but, uh, but what I would do say that even without all the damage that low armor piercing would definitely be a problem uh, so even though you'll be a lot of damage will be going will be will be uh, output from these archers not all of it will actually cause a depletion of the health of the troops attacking it if they have enough armor um, so yeah, uh, that's what I think. Now regarding the prestige skill, this is an old set. They haven't actually improved anything on this. You you can actually get more health and uh, both base health and damage for your troops, which is good. Um, uh, but you do get more damage output with Krothos at 90%. Um, but whenever your enemy is killed, you can get up to 25%, which I think is a really low number. I'm really not sure why they shied away from giving more armor piercing. So even if you kill five enemy troops, and uh, remember these are at uh, at precious level ten, you can get up to twenty five percent extra AP, which is a real letdown. So I think this skill is kind of wasted anyway. Um, now whether you find the prestige skill worth uh, to take this uh, imperial's damage and health up to fifty percent, I think you'll probably start with thirty percent. Not really sure, but I don't think this is a titan where. You particularly need to take it beyond prestige level one or even prestige at all. So uh, that's my thoughts. So Vixia overall pretty decent. Uh, whether she stands the matter, not really sure. Uh, before we compare her with other with Krothos, quick look at the events next week. You got Okinto coming in next week. Uh, uh, it's gonna be a conquest event, probably starting on Monday, right after the Vixia event ends. This is what uh, uh, one of the skills of uh, Oaken Talk would be. You can get different skills for the second or third slot. Not really a great Titan. It's just probably one that you want to have for collection, if at all, um, in the Tords. Um, so, yeah, uh, it will be interesting to see what other Titan they have at level 8 plinth. So, you could probably see, uh, you know, some of the uh, uh, non special, non summoning type uh, Titans. Maybe we. Uh, see uh, Venom Tusk. I'm probably hoping for Venom Tusk to be honest. Uh, I need it for collection, but we shall see. But the real interesting event is happening uh, on the Thursday next week, which is where you can pick up a Divine Touch, which I personally want, uh, but it will be available at 30,000 souls. A stretch goal event. Uh, no idea what the actual Titan is going to be. We'll have to wait for that uh, for the blog next week to know that. Um, but, but but yeah, it's it's gonna be fun. Uh, that's certainly troop damage and troop health is certainly what I'm looking for, and uh, your Freya will certainly love a divine touch. Uh, whatever how that sounds kind of weird, but there you go. Um, we move on.
one to the uh, actual souls and the layout for the rewards it's a 19,000 souls event starting tomorrow uh, oh uh, oh yeah that is I hope that is correct um, and you get 1.4x with Tarhoons, Wixia and Totec if you have a little Wixia lying around that will be great Totec will also work pretty good uh, but I think the quickest raid uh, will probably be Tarhoons um, and we all we probably have discovered so far that Tarhoons is a very good attacker but if not, Totec will do a fair job as well. Krothos and Calvarex uh, will give you 1.3x, uh, 1.2x with all Forza Ice Titans. Now, if you have Aurea or any other Forza Infiltrator, you can actually equip the Aurea's ring and get this up to 1.4x. You can actually get a 1.4x by using the or by using Aurea, Nexus, or uh, I can't remember the other one, the Ice Star, right? Uh, so yeah, there you go, and 1.1x with all these Ice Titans, Frozen Candle is going to be the boost relic this time, Snowgo is going to be available at 9,000 souls, so if you want to get yourself a pig, <laughs> just for collection purposes, there you go, um, Vixia is available at 15,000 souls, which is fairly low, uh, considering where, where we've seen, and she isn't too bad uh, at that price, but yeah, as you can see, you can probably get her for lower by getting into a top 50 alliance. And Staff of Ice is over there at 19,000 souls. Here's your Alliance Rewards. Uh, Snowgo is uh, 51 to 100. So if you really want to get yourself a Snowgo, just want to have a, maybe have a Titan for Prestige Fodder, you don't even have to go to 9,000 souls. Just get into your Alliance that's probably targeting something like, I don't know, 4,000 souls or 5,000 souls, something like that, even lower. And you can probably pick up a for Snowgo. If not, Wixia, um, you can look into Alliance that's aiming for top 50, maybe not necessarily grind up to 15,000 soul, and get yourself a uh, Wixia. But if you really need a Staff of Ice or one of these uh, stretch goals, the Frost of the Frost Charms or a Staff of Ice, then well, you might want to then uh, finishing uh, going and finishing it up. Otherwise, it's gems. Uh, here's the relics. You get Staff of Ice, which is going to give you extra freeze duration. This relic actually might become crucial for a Vixia build. That extra freeze duration, as I mentioned before, if you, uh, uh, if your attacking Titan that thinks attacking your Vixia is frozen for a long enough time, uh, maybe that gives your Imperials enough time to act and completely decimate uh, the attacker. Or even attack as well could be useful. Mm, uh, so yeah, interesting relic. Price at nineteen thousand souls. Frost Charms, you can get some melee resist and imperial resist. You can take up your uh, in your melee and imperial melee resist and range resist to 51%. And if you equip, let's say, the Banner of War, you can take it up to 71%. Um, and I think there is a few other relics you can actually equip. Um, there are, I think there's a one relic called Forest Bow. Um, or yeah, I think Forest Bow that can give you 38% resistance to range. So you, you can actually build up. Uh, your imperial max resist to all, uh, well, max resist to ranged. Chilling while is a popular relic. We've seen it in fair few relics, real, fair few events actually, and this will give you imperial's health and imperial resist against all elements. Fabulous relic, uh, definitely worth considering. Here's a comparison between Wixia and Krothos. What's interesting is if I zoom in here, is that uh, you'll notice that the damage. Is oh, that should not that should have been ice damage? Sorry for that, but the both both of them have the same amount of damage. Uh, both have same AP and critical, but Vixia supersedes Krothos when it comes to armor and health. So I think overall, as an Imperials buffer, in terms of skills, pure skills go, Vixia now takes the crown of being the master of uh, of Imperials. Um, yeah, so that is fun to see, and you also get very close melee and range resist and you get you get elemental resist which isn't present on Krothos. So if you look at that set of skills, Vixia is completely taken over as the master of Imperials. Um, you get on the battle start three S archers, but here you're gonna get uh, the special skill for Krothos is that whenever he does a critical, there's a half chance to freeze an enemy. So whereas Krothos freezes an enemy when he is himself in the midst of battle doing some critical your Vixia is reliant on you killing an enemy. You kill an enemy, then you will get an extra archer. So, uh, yeah, so that is uh, that. That's what's fun. 
I'll just quickly compare that make sure I haven't got that wrong uh, because I have a feeling ah no so it's allied bet so right so that should have been that that shows allied bet guys so whenever your allies die so whenever your allies die let's go there yeah whenever your allies that's when enemy dies whenever your ally dies you will get an extra archer and uh, for his enemy so yeah uh, interesting skill set comparison there. Prestige skill, you're gonna have 50% Imperial's base health and damage. And uh, Prestige skill for Krothos is gonna be 90% base Imperial damage, but you don't get any further health buff. So, uh, Krothos will certainly put out more damage per se, but when it comes to health and armor, Vixia will certainly uh, take pre precedence. Um, yeah, so I think overall. Uh, this is looking like uh, Vixia is taking over as the new Imperial's master. Uh, one thing to do note that in, what Krothos does is you you can actually get your um, Imperial's permanently raged up and there's no limit which definitely sets him apart from Vixia. Uh, talking about the 5 star relics, here's the options that you have. Stormbringer, the original set. The Bow of Gods, the one which is the uh, Norse relic, uh, Yochi's Yumiya is the Golden Relic, and the Amber of Nephilinus, which is the new Amber Relic version available at 7000 Divine Gems. You compare all of them. Uh, if you're looking at, if you want to get the maximum troop damage buff, uh, then it's going to be Yochi's Yumiya, the Golden Relic, because you get 75% or you get 150% troop damage buff. Which is gonna really push the the damage output for Imperials, and uh, I think that's uh, really gonna be interesting. When you are looking at health, then it's Amber of Nephilinus that's gonna give you the most health at ninety percent. Uh, but coming in uh, next to that will be Stormbringer, uh, and if you're looking at getting all elemental resist, then it's Bow of Gods. If you want to push your elemental resist and melee resist up, so you remember you start with 35%, you can get to 75% by just putting the Amber of Nephilinus. Um, I think overall, by looking all of these relics together, I think the one I really like is uh, is actually going to be Amber of Nephilinus. And I would say this because with one relic, you can push up, you can put your melee and resist very high, you can also get your health really high and you get this extra very nice skill of that you will shield up to three troops when an enemy uh, spell is hit on them so if you um if someone casts a lightning spell then you will be shielding up and that could be quite interesting i think uh, yeah i think amber of i like amber of nephilinus but i think coming in close second or very well matched would be yuchi zumiya um, so this will certainly cause the most damage uh, but next to that will probably be in my opinion I think I'll still stick with Stormbringer that elemental resist remember if you're taking your Vixi against an attack you can quite easily put on a few relics to get your elemental resist max that element but so I would put Stormbringer as the third best in this uh, in this lineup uh, but you know that said if you just want like a, a good Relic, a good fire relic that can do that can f do well on everything. A Stormbringer is not a bad choice because you get armor piercing, damage, and health, all of which is quite useful. But if you want to specialize in health and melee and range resist, then Amber of Nephilinus remains the boss, I guess, and Yuchi's Yumiya uh, remains the boss when it comes to pure attack. Alright, guys, I think uh, that's it for this video. I hope you found this analysis helpful. If you did, uh, please drop a like and consider subscribing if you haven't and I'll catch you all in another one.